ready to take a ride. Grab your coffee and strap yourself in. If you listen, I can hear God's plan. Because the show is about to begin. You're listening. You're listening to the Omega Man Radio Network. Tonight, it's a pleasure to be back with Dr. Pat Holliday, Miracle Internet Church. Dr. Sabrina, we want to say hello to everybody at Miracle Internet Church, everybody tuning in around the world. Uh, blog Talk is up and running, so we have the ability also to uh, have people listen by phone if you'd like to do that instead of Wi-Fi. And uh, we're going to have a great two-hour broadcast, and then after this show, we're going to do one more. We'll get the Hobson's Company from Sydney, Australia. So the marathon is in full swing tonight. Um, I say, ladies, we can go to a 115. That'll give us a full two hours. Will that work for tonight? Yes, that will be Okay, great. let's get it started. Welcome back, Dr. Pat, Dr. Right. Sabrina. Would you like to open us up in prayer tonight? Yes, uh, Dr. Sabrina, why don't you just lean over and use that? Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this sacred time that you've given us, Lord, that you've set aside for your own purposes. We thank you, Lord, that you've chosen to use us, and we are honored. We give you praise, glory, and honor, and we lift up your holy name. We plead the blood of Jesus over this meeting and over this meeting time. And from our position seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, we take authority, dominion, and power over the works of every witch, warlock, sorcerer, diviner, pagan, and liar in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind, cage, and chain all the works of the devil in the name of Jesus. We send confusion and division into the enemy camp, and we bind the devils so that they cannot work in unison and in unity in the name of Jesus Christ. We disrupt their lines of authority to each each other in the name of Jesus Christ and we break down their communications in the name of Jesus Christ we call down holy fire from your throne on their communications father so that they are not able to uh, carry out their wicked plans in Jesus name all warfare that they send against Christians against Christian ministries and against your people in your kingdom we return it wherever it came from in the name of Jesus we didn't ask for it and you didn't give it permission to go forth so we thank you, Father, for your authority in the earth. And we raise the shield of faith that's able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And we thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that is risen against us, we condemn it now. In Jesus' name, that is a part of our heritage. We thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus covers your people. The wall of fire surrounds us, that your warring angels war over us, Lord, when we're on the air and when we're away from the air. We thank you, Father, that the embattlements of the enemy shall fall down in Jesus' name. We pull down all their walls of protection, all their barricades, and any other structure or device that they have to shield themselves, Lord, from the prayers returning back from wherever they came in Jesus' name. We forbid any chanting or any peeping or murmuring against the body of Christ in Jesus' name. We declare, Father, that the planets are not to be worshipped, only the Lord God who made them. And we give you praise, glory, and honor. We lift up the name of Jesus. You said if he be lifted up that you'll draw all men unto you. So we thank you, Lord, for that. We're here for souls to be coming into the kingdom, Lord, for lives to be changed people to be healed and set free for the deaf to hear and the blind to see we thank you for your word going forth with power faith and anointing we thank you lord that there will be no miracle that will be withheld from your people in jesus name and we release this broadcast its ministers and the lines of communication even those in the skies 
to you tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus. We disconnect this broadcast from those spirits in the territorial heavens, from those in the bush and those in the deep, Father. And we bind Beelzebub, we bind Baal, and we bind all the wicked demons in Jesus' name. We give you praise, glory, and honor, and we thank you for your peace tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Ladies, the microphone is yours. Welcome back. Well, it's good to be back. Have you been better? I am doing uh, better by the day, and thank you, Jesus. Um, we're going to be all right in the end, I know. Well, you know, uh, everyone that I know has been under just absolute attack. And uh, Albert, I got a note saying that Albert was under attack. Oh boy! Uh, you know, you you interviewed him several months ago, right? And and he's that eighty-two year old man that has a miracle ministry. Albert Lupins, yes. No, he's ninety-two. Ninety-two. Yes, ma'am. And two two women came into a meeting where he was, and told him that they were going to work some powers. And so, in the name of Jesus, we all three agree that all of the powers be lifted off of him and they must go in the name of Jesus yes. immediately right now. And Father, they go Agreed. back to wherever they came from and we forbid them to ever return. We surround him with a wall of fire and we ask God that you put linking angels around Albert and Father strengthen his body, strengthen his mind, strengthen his spirit in the name of Jesus, Lord. And let him feel the rush of wind going through his body so that he can feel the power of God moving. And we give you praise and glory. And we're all agreed in Jesus' name. Amen. Every Amen. spirit of death and destruction, <clears throat> loose him right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every demon sent against him to kill him, we bind it and break its power. I agree. Loose him and go. He will live and not die in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about Luciferians falling tonight. Now, all over the world, we're winning. Uh, I believe that Trump had a very successful trip when he took his world tour a couple of weeks ago. Yes. A lot of things were accomplished. Uh, what I see are things that that I've been seeing for a long time, uh, the uh, families are falling, the first families, the ruling families of the world, uh, the Rockefellers, uh, Jacob Rockefeller. The rumors are that he's dead and um, has been dead for about six months. And, of course, you know, David Rockefeller uh, that's Rothschild I was talking about. Uh, David Rockefeller died uh, on May 1st, uh, 2017. And so lots of things are happening in the background uh, that are going to come forth in the open. Uh, a lot of indictments out there. The last figure that I saw was uh, 60 thousand and they're all over the world uh, I'm hearing that planes are falling out of the sky uh, people are committing suicide because Pedigate is getting ready to be uncovered and uh, a lot of uh, people are trying to flee out of America but this is a world movement that's happening government to government and so really what it consists of, Shannon, is that the Luciferians have been in control of the world with the Queen of England, the Pope, and most all of your world uh, nations, you know, in the world, they were connected, but the world was running on. Dr. Pitt, 
My audio is breaking up. Stand Stop. by a second. There we go. It's back. I apologize. Okay. We lost you for about Was 10 seconds. Me or you? I don't know. Are you on a um, Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi tonight? We're on uh, Wi-Fi. Okay. I we'll think. try to get you on an Ethernet cable. It could be at my end, and then and then we won't have any issues. I'm going to check mine now. Uh, continue on, please. Sorry for the interruption. Okay. And so uh, the... Um, the uh, the federal funded abortions uh, stopped being funded. The Republicans voted against it. Uh, Planned Parenthood stopped being funded, and so the blood that was fueling the world government connections have been broken. Uh, we need to constantly be sending confusion and division into the enemy camp and uh, we are winning uh, Trump at times looks very very ragged and tired and Christians you must remember to pray because if they get American government back again it's all over I can tell you it is all over the government uh Many people are not running for re-election over here. Uh, many people are shivering in their boots because they know that uh, people are singing like birds when they, when the indictments come out against them. Uh, and so I think that it's going to cave in suddenly from within, totally. And so we just need to stand our posts and understand what is behind this and what is behind it is the revival and you see god has a revival that he promises in joel chapter 2 and then in acts chapter 2 and acts chapter 2 is a uh joel chapter 2 uh beginning coming into being at so to speak the church started in acts chapter 2 with the infilling of the holy spirit and so it says the latter will be greater than the former now i'm going to tell you before revival can come totally god has to bring judgment and the bible says Judgment starts at the house of God. And so uh, people that are careless with their doctrines, uh, God is having us uncover a lot of things up on our radio show, uh, Blog Talk Radio, MiracleInternetChurch.com. We're up there every Wednesday and Friday, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. And it's about the third week that we, we've we've done one on your show last week a foundational teaching about some of the era but he's digging into this now and there's not going to be any way that anybody's going to be able to hide their their false doctrines because he's uncovering them you know it's very interesting Shannon that for probably 20 years, he's had me uncovering and writing things about the Book of Enoch and Jubilee and all those false doctrines. And uh, I have lots of information on it uh, up on the internet, internet, excuse me, plus uh, I'm teaching from uh, a doctrine that a, a, a page that a paper that I did that has about 39 pages on it and uh, he's clearly dissecting it so that anyone can understand what's going on and why it's false and I believe that what it is is that is the strong delusion that God is sending on the body of Christ and the Bible says God is sending the strong delusion. In other words, those people that have been playing loose with God for years, 
there's not going to be any place for them to hide. They're going to have to repent if they continue after God convicts them. Uh, his judgment will just fall on them very powerfully. And uh, when it is a fearful thing to fi- to fall into the hands of a living God, that's what the Bible says. So whenever he told me to start that series, I said, God, you know, I've, I've revealed a lot of things. I said, isn't there someone else? He said, you will do this. And so uh, I've been working very, very hard uh, getting all of that uh, information together so that I could make sense of it to the people that are listening. It's a lot of work to do what I do. And and, uh, I spend a lot of time pulling these things together um, in a form that I can kind of stay within uh, some sort of a There's a lot of information, but somehow he's allowed me to be able to zero it down as I go into common language. And so that's what we're praying for tonight. Because we're going to talk about Luciferian falling. Luciferians falling. Now, the Luciferians are, the well, there's many of them all around the world, but the Pope is leading spiritually leading the Luciferians, and it includes Protestants, it includes Charismatics, it even includes Pentecostal. It was sad to see some of the Pentecostal churches have gone over and knelt at the throne of Rome, and I remember coming up that they all believed that the Pope was going to be the Antichrist. But what you're dealing with is several generations that have not really and truthfully heard the Word of God because the Bibles have been replaced. And the Illuminati bought all of the printing presses uh, in America, bought the bookstores, and you could not get anything printed that concerned Jesus, him crucified on the cross, deliverance, nothing, nothing could go through those printing presses except what they wanted to go through. The Bibles that they printed are copyrighted. The the authors of those Bibles that put them together and translated them are secret society people and Illuminatists. And so the body of Christ has been without the word of God as its foundation since the 80s is when it started. And so, but just as God moved over in Ireland with Trump's two aunts, uh, they just prayed. They were just ordinary little Christian ladies. They were not real supernatural they were being struck powerfully by the devils. One was blind, the other one was bent over from the waist, and their heart's desire was one was 82, one was 84, and their heart's desire was that what they wanted, they wanted the, they wanted to see their churches fill with people again. And they prayed, and the and the revival that was brought forth uh, ended up worldwide revival, supernatural. God uh, making visitations to people wherever they were on the streets, on the mountainsides, in the bars, in in the churches, everywhere, and they would start weeping and crying out for God to save their souls. God knows how to have a revival. We cannot help him have a revival, but we can pray. Now, the other area that we need to strongly pray for is their destructions of their high groves. In the Old Testament, the high groves, the uh, king or the prophet always went to destroy the high groves. And... uh, 
that you have to destroy those altars because as long as they come together in one accord worldwide, they have power. And we've been binding the source of their power, which is Satan himself. The Bible tells us to bind the strong man. And then we've also been um, binding the people that are following the demons. And then we are binding the devils and caging the devils. And what we're talking about here is we're talking about powers and principalities and ruler spirits, wicked spirits in high places. And uh, we go after those devils and we're winning. There's no question about it that we're winning. The uh, family connected New World Order has fallen. Uh, What's happening at this point there's a new structure coming into view that you can see if you, if you have even a little understanding. I can clearly see it because I've been talking about these things for since, since probably the uh, early 80s, and I've seen it come together. And uh, I never thought that I would live to see the day to see it all fall apart. But it has fallen apart because we're not the only ones praying. They're praying all over the world. Uh, People in the world are beginning to see who Trump is. Uh, He's got influences, lots of influence in those world meetings that he goes into. And he even made an offer to Merkel why don't you buy your gas from America? You can get a better deal. And admitted that right in front of Putin in the conference uh, last week. And uh, so uh, he's uh, done some very powerful things. Um, The structure of the world is changing. And what it's changing to is changing to sovereign nations instead of the finances of each nation being drained that goes into the pockets of those people that set it up, uh, those families, they call them the Illuminati families, uh, they are now going to go back to the nations. And the nations all were falling apart under this old regime and the nations, uh, the, our, our infrastructure is crumbling over here. Uh, you could hardly make enough money to pay your bills. Uh, you could hardly leave your children any kind of an inheritance because of the taxes. And there was just, it was bad. That was in the realms of the flesh. But also the church was failing. And the church was failing because these people that belong to the Illuminati, the people that belong to the Satanist clubs, uh, they are very faithful. And the reason they're very faithful, if they fail to do what they're supposed to do, demons will come and torment them. Uh, I had a Satanist to come, well, I've had many of them, but they say that in their meetings, no one would dare to come to the meeting late, said if they come to the meeting late, they said um, that uh, they would, the demons would come and punish them. So once, when you first start into Satanism, the demons play with you, and you have fun. You can do all the sin you want, all the sex you want, all of the drugs you want, whatever you're you're, you like, you can do it freely. But once they start getting enough devils inside of you, they enslave you. You no longer have a will. Only God can deliver you. And those devils will come after you for the rest of your life. You have to be totally faithful to Jesus in order to make it through. However... Uh, uh, the here's the thing 
you have to be faithful to Jesus, but it is by your free will. Did you, you, in other words, by their free will, they lose their free will, and the devils come in and conquer them and enslave them and take over their mind, body, and spirit, and then they're driven. But every day as a Christian, you have to wake up and make a decision, I will follow Jesus today. And he hasn't asked you to think about the future. Just take it day by day, and it won't be a chore. Because following Jesus is a lot of fun. I can tell you I've had a lot of fun over these years. So the Luciferians are fallen. And Trump's made the statement, we are stopping cold the attacks on Judeo-Christian values. Well, you see, he started that work right here in our nation through signing executive orders. He signed the Johnson Amendment, which allowed them to control the church since Johnson first signed it when he was president. Uh, No longer does a pastor have to be afraid to speak about politics from the pulpits of his church and losing their tax-exempt status. A lot of people come and they say, the 50Cs are wicked. And if your church belongs to a 50C, then it's of the devil. Well, some preacher started that. And what it is, is the 50C is just the, uh, the... Uh, Constitution allows churches to function uh, under the 50C, which they file their tax exemption forms with the government. But when Johnson came in and he made that uh, executive order, then the government got a hold of the church pastors uh, because if they if they didn't adhere to what the government told them to do, the government could take away their tax exempt status. Now, the tax exempt status was just something that a lot of people won't give their ten percent, which they're supposed to by spiritual law. But if you lose your tax exempt status, then they no longer will support your church. The many churches would have, would have just gone out of business uh, if they had not been afraid of losing them. I'm not giving any, you know, sympathy to those uh, pastors. Our ministry has always operated just expecting God to cover our expenses, and we never begged for money or done anything like that. But some, uh, all, a lot of churches wouldn't be on you know, on the grounds in America today. It's not the 501c that's evil. It's what the government did to the 501c. And then it was the pastors getting in an agreement to keep the 501c. But if they had dropped it, their churches probably would have gone out of business anyway. So a lot of uh, Christians start talking about things And one pastor will come up and make a sermon out of it. And then everybody else comes up and follows. It's like the tithing in the churches. Same thing's going on. The tithing in the churches are shown in the New Testament and the Old Testament. While we see uh, see Jesus uh, sending down to get a coin out of a fish's mouth pay his taxes. Well, you see, in the Old Testament, all the tithe was, was to keep the pastor, uh, uh, the minister, was to pay for him to survive and live every day so that he could set time apart and study the Word of God. And in the New Testament, uh, the Bible shows people giving gifts into the new churches that were being formed all over the countries. And I can't find anything that says that you're not supposed to tithe. 
if you don't tithe, then your pastor has to go to work and work, and he cannot or she cannot spend time in studying. Now, that's where, when I, when I came into the ministry, my husband told me, he said, Pat, God called you. He did not call me to preach. He said, go do whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do. I'm here to support you. So most of all of our ministry has been supported by my husband and then by the inheritance that he left me, which is growing very dim in these latter days. However, Dr. Sabrina was a pharmacist, and she and I would pay our way to Africa. We had no support uh, to pay anything that we did when we used to go out on the highways. Now, you see the church functions in the way God set it up to function. And then you get modern people that really have never been under any kind of foundational teachings. And then they see a scripture over here and a scripture over there. And the next thing you know, a bus, a, a big mess comes out. So God knows that this huge mess is out there. He knows all about it. But if God can come and move on people that... Uh, Arabs, Muslims are getting uh, saved and Jesus is appearing to them in visions and coming to them in dreams and there are hundreds of thousands of them getting saved great crowds there's one preacher that as soon as I get it prayed we're going to have him on our radio show and I'll let you know who he is. I, I'm checking it out, you know, in the spirit realm first. But here's the thing. Uh, God knows the supernatural winds. And God knows how to take Jesus Christ, the wind in the world wind. That's who Jesus is in the Bible. Uh, the false gospel, it's a spirit called Metatron. And the false gospel that's being preached all over the network, they're expecting an alien to come back just like Rome. And they're also expecting a spirit to come back by the name of Enoch, whose name has been changed to Metatron. And uh, the spirit that's coming back is the Antichrist, because we all know from the Word of God that Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back for his church first, and then he's coming back for the Jews that have been saved during the revolution, and so are the tribulation is what they call it. So there's a lot to pray about, and here's a here's, uh, what the promise is. The promise says in Second Chronicles uh, 7.14, If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and will heal their land. Now, there's a great healing in America, and everybody's noticing it. Trump has brought uh, probably three million jobs back into the country since he, he became president. Many of the co companies that left our country and went over to China and other places and their bank accounts on offshore um, banks and hiding their finances and so on and so forth. Many of those businesses are now returning to America. Whenever Obama sent GM companies and Chrysler to China, he went around saving that, saying that he saved the automobile industry. Well, he didn't save it for us. It was saved for the communist lands. And all of our automobiles were coming from China, in addition to that, 
all of the parts and all of those other things that go along, those little businesses that support making automobiles and keeping them up went over there too. So you see, we've been through a drought over here that has been unreal. And some of the people are just beginning to find some relief. There have been more black jobs created under Obama, not, I mean, under Trump, uh, of the history of our country. And uh, he has a lot of uh, testimonies such as that. So uh, he is paying the price. And the price that he's paying is that he knows that every time that he makes a public uh, appearance, that he could be shot or he could be killed. During the campaign, somebody jumped up on this platform, and the men that were uh, surrounding him, uh, surrounded him, and and, uh, they took him immediately off the platform. So he experiences death threats every single day, every single day. The news media over here uh, have just absolutely disparaged him and his family, the liberals, and they keep on. And his life is not pleasurable to be president of the United States of America. While he was over uh, talking with Putin, the press over here ravaged him and the man that has been looking for a, uh, stuff on Trump for two years now since he became president, they haven't found one thing about him meddling in the elections. They chose to arrest some Russians while he's over talking peace to the uh, Putin, the Russian government. Now, you see, that could have precipitated World War III. And that's what they're trying to do. Because there are prophecies from the devil for a hundred years has told them that when World War III happens, that they will win and they will become the rulers of the planet. They're still fighting for everything that they lost in the election. In addition to fighting everything that they lost in the election, they are fighting for their future. They know that there's a lot of material that Trump has access to. And the people that are working in the alphabet government, the FBI, the CIA, and et cetera, there's, there was a lot of, uh, uh, of Obama's uh, people still left in those positions. However, there's thousands of them that are resigning every day, masses of resigns. So bit by bit, Trump is taking back America. Many of the people that su- started out supporting him, including Christians, have fallen away because they expected Trump to come in today and the next day everything be changed. Well, you see, those people had taken uh, the communists, the socialists. They had uh, taken over our country through a political coup, and they had the power over the press because they pay them And Americans were enslaved by those people, but they didn't really know it. They were so busy just trying to survive. There were people in our little church. We used to have prayer meetings. We had to shut the prayer meetings down because nobody could come because they were working three and four jobs just to survive. And so God is turning it around. It takes time. Uh, Trump has a very, very good testimony for all of the things that he has done so far and is doing every day. But what we have to understand as Christians, we need to understand that 
He needs our backing. The Lord called me to prayer, and I had to call Marshall Perot and Dr. Sabrina, and we had to come together and do spiritual warfare over Trump when he went to uh, that trip because he went right during the high days, which these are the highest days, and we'll talk about it for a minute. We're not going to talk as long as I could on this uh, because we want to get to the prayers. But um, the high days of the summer solstice, the Bohemian Club was meeting. They were releasing powers. All of those high clubs all over the world will the world leaders meet and do their sacrifices and worship Moloch. All of them all over the world were meeting when he went over there. And I was busy working on stuff. And somebody called me and mentioned that his plane had just landed in Brussels. And uh, the Lord spoke to me and said, call Marshall, Sabrina, and you need to do some supernatural spiritual warfare. Uh, And we had not bound up the powers and the principalities over those nations. And so we had to come up and have a three-phone connection, and we did a lot of warfare that night for him. And we did a lot of warfare uh, the next night on our radio show. And then we did more warfare for him and what was going on, uh, plus all of the ministries that we were praying for um, Friday night. So we, we have stood the post. You can't be called to God on a post and just leave it. And you know... What was happening to you, Shannon, as the Lord was showing me, was you were under the same attack that we were under. Some of that attack was coming from within the so-called body of Christ. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, belongs to the Lord. And some of them are what you call infiltrators. And it's been so easy for them to infiltrate because the pastors have been so blinded. And so those that are infiltrated, they take their witchcraft uh, knowledge right into the churches, and they work their witchcraft powers right over the people that are in the churches. And they uh, also work their witchcraft powers over the finances of the churches, over the marriages of the churches, over the cultural standards that used to be in the churches that are no longer there. They work their financial curses over the churches so that the churches limp along, cannot survive. And the next thing you know, the churches become an entertainment center instead of a church. Well, up on the Internet, what they have done is they have totally taken over the Internet and its highways. I call it the highway to Rome. That's where we get souls. So uh, because they control the highways through the Facebook and through Google and through all of their resources, they they control the algorithms so that they can put us out in the desert with our stuff, and the ones that are following Satan, they get prime time, so to speak. Well, these are things that we need to be praying about because, you see, we, as we take over the territory and take our government back and protect our, our president and the people that are supporting him and uncovering the nastiness of the Satanists, We have to do these same things for the highway to Rome. That's where the souls are. Now, whenever God released the disciples from knocking on every door in Jerusalem because they they rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah, 
and they started persecuting the disciples, and they had to flee Jerusalem, which forced them to go to the Gentiles. And that's why the Bible says that it's to the Gentiles, it's to the Jew first, then the Gentiles. It doesn't mean that the Jews are better than the Gentiles. God said that he came to save the world over in John chapter 1, that he was God in the flesh, and he came to save the world. That's everybody in the world. However, it says that his people received him not, but the Bible shows very clearly the pathway to opening up that door to the Gentiles. He had to fulfill his promise to the Jews first. And what that was, was that he would redeem their souls. And when you read the Old Testament, and you begin to read the prophets, Jeremiah and Zechariah, and all of those old prophets, and you see the jobs that God gave them, which each one of them were faithful to their post, the same thing happened to their church in the Old Testament that was happening to our church in the New Testament. The devil and the devil's people were taken over those churches. In Ezekiel, it took uh, all the way up to the 10th chapter of Ezekiel for God's spirit to leave the sanctuary. You know, the Bible makes a lot out of when the spirit of God came in, they were all slain under the power of God and the glory of God filled the temple. And uh, when, uh, when Ezekiel came and Ezekiel was called by God to be the prophet of, of the fall of the Old Testament church, uh, what happened was that God took him and showed him the leadership worshiping the gods of the East. He bodily took him up at the river, took him to the temple, told him to dig a hole in the wall. He looks in the wall and he sees the leadership with their backs to the altar of God facing the east, worshiping the gods of the uh, pagans. And so then he showed them the women in the outer court crying for Tammuz, and which was a goddess of a, uh, agriculture. So here's, here's the thing. He showed it to the prophet, and the prophet had a message to preach to the body. Now, those prophets didn't have a lot of popularity. It was the false prophets that they were listening to because they wanted their ears tickled. And they didn't want to hear that they weren't going to ever come back to Israel. Jeremiah and Zechariah and all of those prophets told them, you're never going back. They did not want to hear that. And so in today's internet prophets, they're tickling the ears and the people are entrapped in false prophets on the internet, false ministers up on the internet. And when somebody comes, they are going to suffer the rage, the same type of rages that those Old Testament prophets uh, suffer. Because the people don't want to hear the truth. And Jesus said, that because they did not have love for the truth, he, Jesus, was going to give them over to strong delusions. And I believe that this book of Enoch and these other books that they're studying really is the strong delusions. And they are entrapped in there, and only God can get them out. Now, some of the people that are entrapped under those popular ministers, their God is going to show them. God will get what the true prophets are telling the church in this hour 
because he will make he will get those tapes into their hands he will draw them to listen to those shows where people are telling the truth and people have to make a choice once they hear the truth then they have to make a choice so we're living in the time that the judgment is going to fall on the church the great falling away has already happened there are many people that used to serve god very faithfully until the pastors started losing their ways and preaching strange gospels there are pastors that are preaching for instance following td jakes that are letting the homosexuals come into the church unregenerated now if you read some of my early books you will see god used to bring homosexuals and lesbians to us and to me and they were in the closet and I got on my local radio show and my television show and testified that homosexual came, got delivered, got set free, became a Christian. Uh, several of them went out on the, uh, on the uh, evangelistic field. Some of them started churches down in the islands. God can heal and deliver homosexuals. It's nothing to him. But the pastors came against me because I got a a 15-page letter, what was wrong with homosexuality, when I had two homosexuals to give their testimony, how they got born again, and how they got delivered. So the church is in darkness, just as the church was in darkness in that day. So we have to pray for the churches, just as well as we continue to pray for Trump, because Trump would be dead today if they could kill him. He has uh, more attacks on his life every day I'm reading about than you can ever imagine. I think he's a very brave man because if you think that he's doing these things and he thinks that his life isn't in danger, his kids' lives are in danger, his wife's life is in danger, and yet... He goes out there, gets in front of thousands of people, thousands of people, and goes over into uh, lands that they make effigies of him. And when a person makes an effigy of another person, what that means is it operates just like a voodoo doll. And we had to go up and bind the powers of the effigies that they made over in England. And they're making one over here in America now, which we need to uh, we need to take authority over tonight. So you see, there's not many people that really have the knowledge, uh, and I only have the knowledge because I've cast devils out for 45 years, and I follow God very closely. So uh, God exposure's coming together with exposure is going to come the judgment of God. And it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a holy God. And so we have to pray for those ministers. We have to pray for the church people that have fallen away. We are gathering some, I can tell you. A lady called into our our radio program when we taught, I think it was last week or the week before, and and I I have not mentioned any names, but through the uh, teaching, she knew some of the names. And she said she didn't know so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so, but that God showed her and she repented and wanted deliverance. That's what she told us. And so, uh, of course, we delivered her right on the air. So the thing that I'm telling you is we're in a new church age. And the church age that we're in, in the book of Acts, the age of the Gentiles began. And the age of the Gentiles is the age that the church functions on the earth 
getting the harvest of the Gentile race. Now, the day comes when that door that was open in the book of Acts begins to close. I think that we're in the age of the closing door to the Gentiles. When that door closes, God will open up the door again for the Jews to come in to be saved. And I think that those Jews will be saved. Some of them are being saved now. I think some of them that are being saved will be evangelist. Um, but, uh, you know, the 144,000 will be the evangelists. But the reason that the church will be gone is in the third chapter of Revelation, the Bible calls John, uh, he's, a door opens and a voice says, come up hither. And from that time that John raises up and goes, uh, the Spirit of God shows him the things to come. The, it, the Bible says he's showing him the things that are, the things that will be, and the things in the future, the things that come. And I believe that uh, he shows them, uh, John, the tribulation period that will come upon the Jews. And it's during that time that the 144,000 will be preaching. And the Bible says that angels will fly through the air and preach. So the church people are gone. Because if we were here, we would be preaching. So uh, we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, where we're introduced as Christ's glory and his bride. And while we're at the marriage supper of the Lamb, we marry Jesus. We become his wife. We return when he gets on his white horse, and the big angel covers covers the sun, and the glory of God is seen because he becomes the light of the world. And his saints are riding the horses right behind him back to the Mount of Olives. And when his foot touches the Mount of Olives, the Bible says that that mountain disintegrates like powder. And uh, the Bible shows that it's at that time that he... he uh, judges between the goat and the sheep. Well, the sheep are the believers in Jesus Christ. The goats are the ones that tormented and enslaved his brethren, his blood brethren that have returned to Israel. So all of these things are lining up to happen. The new world order that is forming now is the new world order that we see over in the book, in the Bible, in the Revelation, and the prophecies. And the Antichrist will come from the new world order. It won't be the phony world order of the first families of the world. The Queen's Son is not going to become the Antichrist, which was laid out a hundred years ago, uh, when Balatsky got the information from a demon that translated that information to her of the end times. And they were working with the governments of the world to bring forth the Antichrist. And I believe that uh, the Antichrist that they were working to bring forth was the queen's son. Uh, and the queen's relatives, which they claim to be descendants from Mary Magdalene and Jesus getting married. Well, that never happened, but that's who they think they are. And so there's so much that the body of Christ doesn't know. They haven't been taught the end time scriptures and they haven't been taught the foundational scriptures. So this is a job for Superman. And Superman is Jesus. Superman is the one that has control over every single soul. 
every one of us breathe every day because he gives us that day to breathe. And so whenever they become born again, the Bible describes in John 14 that the Holy Spirit comes. Jesus Christ is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, Jesus baptizes you according to John who was baptizing people in the river for repentance. He said, one, I'm, I'm not worthy. They wanted to know if he was the Messiah. He says, one's coming whose shoelaces. I, I can't even tie them. He said, he will baptize you with fire. So the uh, Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Ghost. The Bible makes a point to show that he never baptized anybody. It doesn't show him baptizing in the water at all. So Jesus is your baptizer of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit baptizes you. And it's for people that are born again. Believers. And so when the Holy Spirit baptizes them. They become the church, and then the Holy Spirit becomes the administrator of the church. And as administrator of the church, he's the one that tells us what to do. He's the one that when the disciples had a a successful evangelistic trip, they wanted to go over into Asia. He said, no, you can't go there. A couple of chapters on down, he says, now you can go. You see, he goes before us, and he prepares people's hearts to receive us as Christians. So we have to have an understanding of the Bible, but God can give you quick understandings of the Bible if your heart's right with him. So, Shannon, the warfare that you went through was a warfare against your health to knock you out because your your ministry hasn't really started yet. Uh, you feel sometimes like you're missing out because you want to be ministering. That's what your heart is, desire. You know? And sometimes, well, let me finish what I'm saying because it's directly to you, and then you can keep that in thought. Yes, ma'am. See, he's telling you something. You want to go minister, and God has you revealing the reality of the deliverance ministry to the world. Your ministry connections as far as viewers has not even begun yet. You see, if you will be obedient to God, and if you will pray sincerely about who you have up on that talk show, and if God tells you to lose somebody, just lose them. Test the spirits to make sure it's of God. Because God wants uh, the deliverance ministry exposed, but he wants real deliverance ministries. Some people think they are, but they are not. They're in training, but some some think that they're already there, but they're not, their foot isn't even in the front door, okay? I don't listen to your show. It's not that I don't agree with it. I probably would agree with some of it and not others. I don't know. I don't listen to them. Because of the fact that if God has something for me to tell you, I want God to tell you. I don't want it to be me. I don't want me not to like somebody and come up and tell you something that God hasn't said. And so that's why I don't listen. And uh, But you're, you're on the job. And what God has shown me, if you're faithful, that your ministry will be bigger than any ministry that you know up on the internet today. And you know a lot of them. A lot of them are a lot bigger than you. Your ministry is going to be bigger. I see that he is going to open up the satellites for you very quickly. And then they can't control what the people say when you go up on the satellites. So we we're going we're seeing a beginning of something that God hasn't completed. But you see, you're like me, 
when God took me off the field, I love to minister because the glory of God comes in when I do. And you see the most phenomenal things that you'll ever see in your life. You'll see when we were in Africa, every time we got up to minister, there'd be 25 to 30, 40 witches in the meetings working powers against us. And the glory of God would come down. And I've got film where the witches would run from me when I'd walk over to where where they were. And so God wants his church infused with his knowledge and with his power. And only he can give that to you. But because you want to minister, you might have a tendency to step out and go to minister when he hasn't told you to do it. And that's how I almost lost my life doing that. When I stepped out, I got an invitation to go to Atlanta, Georgia. Flies are coming. To Atlanta, Georgia. And um, a woman, the, the pastor, gave an altar call. Anybody that needs deliverance, come forth. Nobody was standing next to me, guarding me. A thousand people came up. All this stuff was going on with all that many people at the altar. And a witch grabbed me by the arm. And she started running. And she took a big circle. And then as she made the curve of the circle, she dropped, let loose of my arm. I fell and broke my femur bone in five places. And uh, it took... Uh, a good while for me to be able to uh, walk and stand. The pain was so terrific because that's the biggest bone in your body. Uh, I could have begged to die, but I I struggled for the church and for my my children to live. And um, so it was because God didn't tell me to go. Sabrina couldn't go. She couldn't get all. The people that usually go couldn't go. And those people up there had a lot of witches. They were from Africa. It was an African group. And whenever I I discovered I'm not in charge, I better listen to God. Because if you step out of his will, and if he places a supernatural ministry on you, You can lose your life. So you have to learn total obedience in order to be a minister in this end time church. And you have to do it, even if you don't want to do it, you have to do it. And so this is just my advice to you. Be prayerful about everything that you do. Because you see, as he expands your ministry... You have to be able to walk in that warfare that you're walking in right now before you can step in a higher level. And and just when you get comfortable walking where you are now, then you think, I got it all together. And then another stairway opens for you to climb and you find out, oh, no, I need you, Jesus, <laughs> because you have to learn the warfare each day that you walk in, and it's like walking up a ladder. And so that's where you are, and you don't know what he's going to do. But I can tell you, you complain all the time about the church is not understanding or having the deliverance ministry. Let me tell you something. The Internet doesn't have the deliverance ministry either. And so as God releases these people into the kingdom, He's going to have to have ministers. So your ministers are being trained on your program. And they're growing as they learn from each other. They're like they're in a school. And like you mentioned, uh, the old man that was, uh, what was what was his name? Albert Lupin. David. Well, no, the one that you meant, that you had last week. A new old man that knows the word real well. Oh, um, Brother um, Ronald Paulson. 
Yeah, Paulson. Yes, okay, ma'am. see, now this man, uh, he's been in the Bible all of these years, and I haven't had time to listen to him yet. I'm going to. But people like that came from the beginning of the charismatic revival, and they know Jesus, and they've stuck with him. They still serve in him. They haven't gone away into all this phony stuff, and they're teachers to the body. And so as God brings those kind of people across, you're probably the only show on the Internet that can take them. Well, he's going to increase your listening audience. You can depend on that if you're faithful and you just do it. You feel sometimes like you're a slave because you're working so hard. And uh, I know where you are. Believe me, I've already gone through those gates. But God has a plan for your life. And for you to go where he wants you to go and probably where no man has gone, you got to be faithful. And sometimes you just have to grit your teeth and say, I don't want to do it, but I'll do it. And that's what I said when he told me to uncover the stuff that I'm doing on our radio show. I said, I really don't want to do it because I've been through it over and over. I've been a battering rod for the uh, for the unbelievers that play like they're believers in the body of Christ ever since I got saved. And, you know, you get tired of it. But my flesh has to be in subjection to Jesus. So whatever he calls me to do, I do. And that's what you've got to do. And that's all I have to say to you about it. But what did you have to say? I want to say thank you for imparting that wisdom. And, uh, you know, I really praise the Lord that he knows my name and that my name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. And um, to have a job working for Jesus in these last days. Um, He's been good to me, and uh, it's just an honor to be able to serve. And I'll tell you, I'm excited about the days ahead, Dr. Pat, Dr. Sabrina. I know that there is much fruit that we can have. I'm talking to everyone out there tonight in these last days. If we'll say yes to Jesus, we can see exploits done. God will use us to do some amazing things, and uh, it'll be worth it. Because hey, yes. it's going to wrap up soon. Jesus will come back. And what we were going to do, our opportunity is done. So, uh, you know, I just counted an honor to serve. And uh, I tell you, I am very hopeful for um, expansion. And um, I believe God's going to do it. In fact, just as you are saying that uh, earlier tonight, the uh, Lord brought back to mind, maybe you might want to uh, call World Harvest Network and check on a shortwave slot. Now, that's not the end all shortwave, but uh, just another thing we could we could add, uh, reach a few more people. Mm-hmm. There's all kinds of opportunities out there, and I'm excited about it. Thank you very much, Dr. Pat. I received well, that well, wisdom. The way, the way this thing is going to come about, uh, the money will be there. You're not going to have to struggle. Uh, the Lord is unleashing uh, monies that have been going into the false ministries, and it's been a big deal. Uh, Some of those people are going to get under his conviction. The revival means that God puts it together. And when the people come and they get saved, they know that it's a matter of life and death that Jesus lets them in the door. And that's why they weep and cry. They know that this is the only chance that they'll ever have to come into the kingdom. And there are still people that are under the false ministries that give them a lot of a lot of money and God is saving some of these people and and he's going to bring them right to your door and they're going to give you money that you not you not expecting it yet but it's going to be some big money coming through God has to to test you so that you know not to misuse his funds and so uh, the money's coming. Just don't think about it. When the money starts rolling, and I think it's very soon, uh, you're going to see a sudden change because the revival is the last revival, the latter rain, which is Joel 2 in the latter moments of history being fulfilled, and Acts 2 
was the beginning. We are at the end. And God is going to use people that you never thought was possible for him to use. In addition to that, the uh, the people that belong to God in the first chapter of Ephesians, God calls us his glory. And when he introduces us to his father, he says, this is my glory. These are the ones that are faithful to me. And he calls you his glory in chapter 2, and he calls you his glory over in the New uh, Testament revelations. And uh, now when you think about God calling you a little human being his glory, that ought to give you an awful lot of confidence that he's able to finish what he started in you. You just have to be uh, submissive to him and let him do the work, and you follow. Mm -hmm. And as you follow, you the doors begin to fly open, and the greatest revival that the world has ever seen is getting ready to happen. And it's going to happen. And those that are listening to us tonight, you need to make a sold-out commitment to Jesus. You're doing things in your life that you want to do because you think you're helping God or you're doing something for God. You know, every one of you, God has a purpose for your life. And Amen. it doesn't matter if you're just praying for your husband to get saved. Maybe that's why God brought your husband to you or your daughters or your sons or your pastor or your church, or whatever it is that you're doing. Seek God diligently. Ask Him to embroiden your walk with Him, your knowledge from His Word. I suggest you get a King James Version of the Bible and start reading it faithfully every day. And God will lead you and be obedient. If He tells you to go next door and pray for the neighbor, Put whatever you're doing down and go next door. He'll put the anointing and the prayer in your life and in your mouth to pray for the neighbor. He does the work. You're his vessel. I used to tell people, I'm just a little water hose. And when God turns it on, he turns it on. And I just go with the flow. And then things happen. So God n needs you. In this hour, he loves you. You were born for such a time as this. You were born. The things that you did in your life, that the devil beats you over the head with, well, I remember when you were a prostitute. I remember when you were a lesbian or a homosexual. I remember when you stole this or that. Look, you did those things because one of the things is when you minister to sinners, you're not going to come at them with, I'm high and mighty, and you're a worm. You're going to understand that they were just like you, and they can be just like you are now, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, sanctified by the power and the blood of the Lamb. So we have to begin to see how God looks at us, not how the devil has seen us and made us to think we still are. When you become born again, the Bible says, old things are passed away, all things are made new. And then it says, we are made new creations in Christ Jesus. He says, all things are changed. All things, old things go away and all things are made new. What that means is, the dead spirit that was in you that was falling after the devil because you were a fallen person, God comes to you. You ask him to save you. He takes his holy breath and he breathes on you. When his breath comes upon you, it's exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden when he breathed on Adam and life came into him. Your dead spirit comes alive, and it comes alive to God, and it comes alive to his word. His word comes easier for you to understand. 
and the glory of God resides inside of you, and the glory of the Holy Spirit and the Father live inside of you, and you become a walking sanctuary. And as a walking sanctuary, this is why the people in the world reject you, because those devils see you, they know who you are, and they say, ooh, look at that old Pat Holiday over there, I can't stand that woman. Well, what's wrong with her? I don't know, but she just gives me the creeps. Well, that's the devil trying to separate them from you because if they come over to you and you start talking about Jesus, you're going to become like they are. So understand that you're not rejected. They're not rejecting you. Jesus said they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. And they're rejecting the Jesus in you. And start seeing yourself that God is going to call you his glory in front of his father. I'll tell you, that did a lot for my spiritual ego when I read that. And it should do a lot for yours. So whenever a saint prays, it's more than a saint praying. It's Jesus Christ sitting at the right hand of God the Father Bible says, making intercession for you and me. And then he gave us spiritual weapons in the uh, New Testament and the Old Testament that shows us exactly who we are. And whenever we pray, what happens is we are his spokesman. We are Paul. We are Peter. We are his disciples. We are the succession of those people on the earth today. The same anointings that he gave to them, he places on us. And as we walk under his anointing, we are able to do the same things that they did. And Jesus said, I go to the Father, and the things that I do, you shall do greater. And I've seen things, you know, that are just so amazing that we were able to see. And it's it's like giving up your life to come off of the mission field where you see the glory of God moving in your ministry and thousands of people flocking to you. And you're seeing the glory of God descend on that. And everybody in the building are are on fire for God because the glory has arrived. The the meetings over there, I mean, it was a small taste of heaven, and it was because he was there. And he uses you so greatly. Things that happened that we never could have imagined would have happened for us. And we were just two little American women trying to do something for Jesus. So... Your time has just started. Your training was going against bumps. It was hard. I called Brother Vineyard. Brother Vineyard was a man that God sent to Jacksonville when I was a little baby Christian. He was in the revival of the 50s. He was the first man that God grew a leg out in the country. He was a deliverance ministry. And uh, him, Oral Roberts, Kenneth Hagan, uh, uh, all of them uh, had the deliverance ministries. But um, as they died, the pastors put it back out of the churches. So uh, he, God sent him to Jacksonville. He was 84 years old. He was my age when he came. And he told the pastor, he said, God sent me here for three days to preach, he said, but tonight he spoke to me and he said, I cannot leave until he tells me to leave. He said, there's someone here that he's ministering to and and he needs me to minister to that person. Well, the Lord spoke to me and he said, it's you, Pat. And I said, oh, nobody will believe that. They don't like me anyway. And so... He taught on deliverance, and he taught me how to bind and loosen and do all of the things that we do today. And he uh, came and ministered to my husband, and 
uh, he wrote the forward in the book Be Free that I wrote. And um, I'd call him every now and then because there was no one to talk to. And I'd get under such attacks that were unbelievable. And so one day I called him and I said, Richard, I'm, I'm quitting. I've had enough. I just can't take it anymore. I said, I don't have anybody that speaks to me. I said, I walk around all by myself. The pastors all think I'm a witch. And I said, I, the, the warfare is just so tremendous until I feel like I'm in a cage all the time. And I was just going on and on and on about what I was walking through. I was a baby Christian when all that was going on. He says, don't quit, Pat. Don't quit. Don't quit, Pat. I'm going to pray for you. Don't quit. And so, you know, he 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 was a, a, a powerful man of God, walked right side by side with A.A. A. Allen and all of those wonderful people. And uh, I was privileged to know him. He was the man that went down to Miami and testified in court for Jack Coe, who the city of Miami put in jail for practicing medicine without a license for wow. healing the sick with prayer. Go ahead, Shannon. Well, that's an amazing story. I had heard a little bit about uh, him going over there. Amazing. Back to you. Yeah. Yeah. He was, a, he was a blessed, but God sent him to me. And see, the thing is, is as you're faithful, as you're praying and standing and resisting, like you did. You you know, I offered to stand with you. I sent you several emails that even Dr. Sabrina and I would get on the phone and pray with you. Yes, you did. But you did not respond. But, you know, you were fighting that battle for yourself. And, and that's why God, because every battle you win, you get stronger. Every battle that you overcome, you get stronger. And see, to do what we do. We've, we've, we've been through some hell. We've yes. walked across the waters many times with the Lord. And so uh, it's been worth it all as far as I'm concerned. And I'm sure Dr. Sabrina will tell you the same things. But a uh, lady called in the radio station the other day. And, uh, you know, Dr. Sabrina rides around in a 13-year car. We bought them together. My car's 13 years old. It still works great, but it's 13 years old. And I must have mentioned it or something. And somebody called in and she said, uh, I'm getting uh, some money and I'm going to buy Dr. Pat a car. And we both about fell out the chair. Praise because God. we get, you know, we minister to the poor. <laughs> and uh, we don't get very big ministry donations. And uh, so... Uh, and we don't get up there and beg for money either, ever. But um, uh, Sabrina looked at me, and she almost fell off of her chair. And But see, God showed me. He said, this is what's coming, and you don't have to beg. He said, they'll just appear. I had a man to appear in my church this past Sunday. His grandfather uh, did the cartoon... Um, uh, Charlie Brown. <laughs> Charlie Brown? Charlie Brown. Yay! His grandson appeared there. I had an Illuminati guy appear there a couple of weeks ago. Wow. Next thing I'm expecting is uh, movie stars to show up. You, don't, you know, they're getting desperate out there. Yes. And so we're all they got. There is nothing, there's no place for God to send them. We're it. You know, Dr. And Pat? When you be, you know that you just stand your post, mm -hmm. like like Vineyard told me. Amen. Don't quit. Just keep on plowing, and God will plow with you. Go ahead. I want to say just something briefly to encourage the people out there. Uh, the Lord brought to my mind here kind of a picture. You know, folks, uh, as the body of Christ, we're all fighting for the same commander, Jesus Christ. We've got a common enemy. We've got a goal to win as many souls as we can for Christ. And if just each of us will do whatever God puts in our path at a given time, we'll have victory, folks. And, um, you know, I saw a picture of like a soccer team, if you will. I'm not a big soccer fan, but I've seen a few matches, and they call it football over here in these other countries. Essentially, you know, the goal is to score 
a goal and get that ball into that net. And uh, it's not about one person at one end of the field just kicking one shot, go all the way in. It's a chance ours can be blocked. But they work together as a team. And at any given time, you know, your uh, assignment may change. You may be the person to set it up for another person to kick in the final ball. You know, one guy kicks to number two man, number two kicks it over to the third one who is closest, and they score. And you know what? <clears throat> Everybody shares in that win. It's a, it's a team effort, folks. Shit. Every one of us can accomplish much. And working together, oh, boy, one puts 1,000 to flight, two 10,000. Folks, uh, we're all going to be together who make it in in the new Jerusalem. Let's start working with one another. Get used to it. We're going to uh, be with everyone, you know, right there when Jesus Christ comes back to rule and reign. It's a body ministry. And at any given time, God may activate a gift in you that will help others that you're ministering alongside, and you use it. Um, but remember who we're working for, and it's not to work for him. That's the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. And so, you know, God just called me uh, to a particular task here eight years ago to set up a platform and get out there and bring other members of the body of Christ on this program. The men and women of God, Dr. Pat, Dr. Sabrina, Miracle Internet Church, the others that come on this program, give them a microphone, support their ministries. They're equally important to the body of Christ as uh, this little small job God gave me. We're all working on the same team. You're on the same team, all of us. God may give you a greater assignment than another at one particular time. He may send you over to be a Billy Graham somewhere. Praise God. We're all working on the same team. And uh, that's, that's Team right. Jesus tonight. And so whatever he gives you to do at any given time, do it. And if he can trust you in the small things, he'll give us uh, greater things to work with. So I'm just excited to be here. And, uh, you know, I celebrate any victory where it's at because I know, hey, there's a great reward. You know, you sow into ministries and then they win souls. Hey, you've got some of that reward on your account. It's a good thing to work with the Lord. And that's what the enemy's tried to do in closing is try to break people up, isolate them. He doesn't want the body of Christ coming together. Oh boy, if these denominational walls would be torn down and people would begin to come together, begin to bind and loose in Jesus' name, engage in spiritual warfare, oh, the enemy would have a hard time. And to a big degree, we did when it came to this election. But it's going to take a greater effort in the days ahead because the enemy knows his time is short and he's coming to make war on the saints, folks. Understand that. And uh, let's not turn back. Let's do all we can with the time we got. Now, speaking of time, we've got okay. another 25 minutes on the clock. Dr. Pat, okay. would you and Dr. Sabrina like to break off into some warfare prayer tonight? Pray. We're going we're gonna to pray Let's do it. because of the fact that we got to. <laughs> okay. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, you gave us the message that the Luciferians are falling. And we give you glory and praise. And there's news reports that show us that they have fallen. And that the Pope has fallen, and Father, heads of nations have fallen. Uh, the pedophiles is people are coming under indictments, and some of them are committing suicide. Some of them are are trying to fly away, but there's nowhere for them to go because the New World Order has totally fallen. And Father God, in the new in the news right now, the Bohemian Club is is there and they're doing their rituals to their uh, god Moloch which is a 40 foot owl god as you know and it's a thing and it's got spirits in it but those spirits are not greater than your spirit so we take authority over the uh, Bohemian Grove and all of the groves connected to all of the nations of the world and we bind the powers and the principalities, the wicked spirits in high places, all of the devils that serve them, all of the people that are demon-possessed. We bind all of those demons up and Satan. The Bible says for us to bind the strong man to destroy and for us to rob your house. So we bind you over all of these groves. We put a tent over all of the groves 
that uh, are ruling over the nations, all of the 72 devils that rule over every nation, we bind you. And Father God, we also come against all of the uh, spirits that have people encaged. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we lift up all of your ministers in your churches that have been blinded, that are encaged in devils of blindness and doctrines of devils. And Father God, we take authority over all of those spirits, all of the false doctrines, all of the false teachings, all of the false things that they've got involved in over these years, and we bind those things up. We ask you, Father, to bind the things in every congregation, every Christian on the face of this earth. We're believing, God, in the name of Jesus, that you're dispatching from your throne warring angels to go and fight for the souls of the people that are coming in from your great revival. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name, Father, that every devil that has divided the Trump organization and the people that are following Trump, we take those spirits of division and we command them to go back to where they came from and we divide the enemy's camp and we command that camp to continue to divide and divide until it becomes so weak that it can in no way function at all. We give you the praise and the glory, God. We take authority over every witch that has gone to celebrate this full week to worship at the full buck moon. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, they are defeated, totally defeated. And and all of those prayers and all of those sexual ritualisms, all of the blood sacrifices that are being had from animals, human beings, babies, also from little children. Father God, your blood is stronger than all of the blood in the world. That's what Hebrews teaches us. And in the name of Jesus, we take authority over those blood sacrifices and we cover the everything that they sacrificed to have spells over that a tent is placed over where they're worshiping and they just fall back upon them, whatever they're calling up. And Father God, we pray for Trump, his family. We pray for our government. It's my understanding that thousands have already resigned from different jobs within the government. Uh, it's, it's not front page news, but nothing is because the only thing that they can talk about is Trump and they've lied. Father God, all of those news people that constantly bang on him day in and day out, we take authority over those spirits that are in them and we bind them and we command their mouths to shut. We take authority of the spirits of hate all of those spirits that are working against our nation, all of the socialistic, communistic spirits are bound. We give you praise and glory. Father God, also, this is the great celebration of the destruction of the Second Temple in Rome, and it's a big Jewish holiday. And every time there's a Jewish or a Christian holiday, Father God, these people work powers. And we bind up all of the religious spirits that are operating uh, against the church, against what you're doing in the revival. Uh, we call back the falling away people. And Father God, we release the conviction of the Holy Spirit on them. And we ask you, Father, that you send people to witness to them about Jesus and spend angels to them that will praise the name of Jesus day and night and worship him, that those devils will willingly want to leave. We give you praise and glory, God, that the enemy is already defeated because you're on the scene and your power is always greater. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, 
that as you gave that 15-year-old Jewish boy who was born in a heathen family that thought he was crazy when he died for 15 minutes and came back and he told about the Messiah coming and other things that are in your Bible. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you the glory for all that you're doing to bring an end to this disgraceful behavior that goes on in our country. We ask for the arrest of Hillary Clinton, of Obama, and all of the people that are connected to them. The people that are heads of governments that refuse to change, to come in to the new world that you're forming so that your scriptures can be fulfilled. And Father, you just reminded me, don't forget to pray against um, Zeus, Isis, the goddess and the gods of war, Jupiter. And Father God, we bind them worldwide. We forbid those prophecies that they've made to come true in Jesus' name. And we give you praise. And Father, there's so much more that we need to pray for, but we have to get off the air soon. So all of the other things that we were going to pray, we just place them before your throne and we know that they're answered already. Now, Shannon, I'm putting this to Sabrina, and you tell her Praise about the Lord. time and all that. Praise God. Dr. Sabrina, welcome to the broadcast. 90 seconds. Good evening. Good evening. We're doing good for time. We've got another 15 minutes, so just to give let you know. All right. Well, I'm going to go as fast as I can, Shannon. Father, in the name of Jesus, from our position seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, Matthew 10, 26, Mark 4, 22, Luke 8, 17, 12, 2, Job 34, 22, Job 20, 27, Proverbs 11, 13b, Daniel 2.29, Amos 3.7, and Romans 1.18. Father, in the name of Jesus, we call for the destruction of all those high groves, all those altars in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that it's a righteous thing to do. And we thank you, Lord, that that is what will happen. We ask you, Father, to release your host against every altar of the devil in the name of Jesus, regardless to where it is, how it has been formed, and how it has been brought about. We thank you for its utter destruction in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says the mouth of the foolish is near destruction, and those that are worshiping out those altars, Father, are calling destruction on themselves. We ask you, Father, to complete this work by answering through the scriptures in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you to answer those altars by the covenant in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you, Father, to reveal the thoughts and the hearts of many and to remove Ten the veil, seconds. Father. Remove the veil that co- that allows the hypocrisy to continue. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says when Jesus died on the cross that the veil was rent from top to bottom. Father, we ask that you strip this veil away also. That this veil cannot stand, the veil that we can vaguely see what the devil is doing and vaguely see what his agents are doing. And we get glimpses of it, Father, but we don't see it all clearly. We ask that you strip that veil away, Father, that veil of hypocrisy and that veil of lies in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind, cage, and chain every lying spirit that attends it in the name of Jesus Christ. We forbid them to continue their work. And the lies that they have uh, put forth, Father, we ask for those lies to return to them that they will begin to believe them, but they will not be able to make them manifest on other people. We strip those lies away from the body of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Father, that every syllable of them that was ever spoken will be burned up in your holy fire in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that there was nothing that will be covered and that shall not be revealed. We thank you for the revelation of the truth, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that the blind will see and the deaf will hear, and not just in the physical, but in the spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and that there is nothing here that shall not be known. We thank you, Father, for proclaiming the truth wherever it can be heard and wherever it will be received in Jesus' name. We take authority, dominion, and power over every spirit that attempts to bring forth World War III and have a premature precipitation 
interpretation of war in Jesus' name. We bind all the strategies of evil and wicked men and evildoers in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you, Father, to move in your churches among your people and restore their marriages, their finances, and the social order of the church that you set forth, Father. We take authority, dominion, and power over every voodoo doll that's been made of not only Trump, but everybody that uh, that supports him and everyone that works with him in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind, cage, and chain the works of all the infiltrators, and we ask that you uncover them, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you make their words known. We thank you, Father, for those that know the truth, Father, but that are afraid to tell it, that you will embolden them, and that their tail-bearing, as they have done before, Father, will bring the truth to the surface in Jesus' name. We give you praise, glory, and honor, Father, that the truth cannot be hid in the word of God is not bound. We thank you, Lord, for the word going forth with power and anointing and faith, Father. We thank you, Lord, that we will see your mighty hand at work, not only in the natural circumstances, but we will perceive in the even in the spirit, Lord, how you're moving. We thank you, Father, that we are submitted to you, that we are yielded to you, Lord, and that we are learning to, and that we are learning Lord God, how to walk with you in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you praise, glory, and honor, Father. We thank you for Brother uh, Brother Shannon and the word that you spoke to him tonight, Lord. And you reminded me as I was listening, Father, of many a test that you put me through. And one in particular, one night in the middle of the night, you told me to get up and drive across the bridge. And as I was going across the bridge, a huge rainstorm came, and you told me these words, and you repeated them, stay the course. And even through that storm, Father, all you did was drive me to Publix, but even I had to get out of the car and go into the store, and I got drenching wet. And after I got in the store, you said, okay, you can get up and go home now. But I had to learn. That was an example that you gave me. You were giving me a principle of staying the course no matter what. And no matter what befell me to continue until I reached my destination and did what you had for me to do. And we thank you, Father, that we will stay the course. We will not be ahead of you nor lag behind you. But we will walk as the Holy Spirit gives us instruction, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We listen for your instruction and we hearken to it, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we give you praise, Father, that you have chosen to train us and to use us. And there are many there, Father, that need a word of encouragement. We release that encouragement to them now from your throne in the name of Jesus Christ. We say lift up the hangs at hand down and we strengthen the feeble knees in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you praise, glory, and honor for the power of God we're being released in the body of Christ where true believers are looking for their Savior to come forth. We're looking for his move in the land, Father. We thank you, Lord, that many things are being moved out of the way, even as we pray this prayer, Father, to make room for those that you are bringing into the kingdom in Jesus' name. We thank you for the Holy Spirit ushering them into the places that you have for them, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that their hearts will be open and that they will be ready to receive the word of God, even as it is preached, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that they will only be directed to those places that you have for them. Them, Father, and they will not be able to sit in the dry churches that have turned away from you long ago. We give you praise, glory, and honor for calling your people out of the dry places, Father, into a place where they can learn who their God is and what they have been called to, that they might obey you. The Bible says that your people will be volunteers in the day of your power. The day of your power is here, Father, and we have submitted and laid ourselves before you and said, Lord, send us. We thank you for the preparation. We thank you for the training. We thank you, Lord, even for the training through the warfare in the name of Jesus Christ because in the days to come, the warfare will be intense. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the fortitude and the strength, the patience and the willingness to walk forward with you no matter the circumstances in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that our spaces are set like a flint and that we will obey you no matter what it costs. We will turn on a dime if that's what it takes. And we give you the praise, glory, and honor, Father, for the way that you have designed us and made us, Father, because we are fearfully and wonderfully made in the grace of Almighty God. And we give you praise, Father, in Jesus' name. Wow, I say amen. Praise God, everybody. Exciting oh. to be here tonight. Great great message and great prayer tonight, Dr. Pat, Dr. Sabrina. Would you please take a few moments and uh, tell people about Miracle Internet Church, how 
they can tune in, how they can support the ministry? Surely. Uh, Miracle Internet Church is live on the Internet at www.miracleinternetchurch.com every Wednesday night and Friday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time in the United States of America. Also, we, uh, we're on Blog Talk Radio, and it, you just type in www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Dr. Pat Holliday, and you'll find there our archives and library of seven years of worship broadcasts. And you may listen to our most recent one, and you may share them with your friends. Our church, Miracle Outreach Church here in Jacksonville, Florida, meets every Sunday at 1230 p.m. Eastern Time on Bay Meadows Road here in Jacksonville, Florida at the Four Points by Sheraton Hotel. And the phone number for that is on our website at www.miracleinternetchurch.com. Also, Dr. Pat has over 150 ebooks on Amazon.com in the Kindle store. So we encourage everyone, we encourage everyone to um, avail themselves to the things that God has for us. We meet at 8520 Bay Meadows Road, Jacksonville, Florida, 32256, and the number for reservations is area code 904-562-4920. And God bless you. God bless you, Dr. Sabrina. Folks, have you enjoyed tonight? I certainly have. This is a right now word, and I'm honored to be able to bring on Miracle Internet Church, Every Tuesday night, same time, 11 Eastern, that's uh, 8 California time, prime time out there. And uh, Dr. Pat, in addition yes. to the broadcast that you're doing, there are Miracle Internet Church. Uh, you have a church there, physical church, in sun on Sundays that meets there. Right. And um, are people welcome to come out there on Sundays? What time do you meet once again? We meet at 12.30 on Sundays, and this is summertime. Yes. The weather's nice, and we're baptizing people every wow. week. And it, it, it's on Bay Meadows Road, 8520 Bay Meadows Road, Jacksonville, Florida. And they can make their reservations, 904 and if they tell them they're coming to our church, they'll give them a discount for their rooms. Oh, that's fantastic. You know, I had someone contact me the other day, and they said, you know, I'm ready to get baptized. And I was <laughs> thinking, uh, i got to talk to Dr. Pat. Do they do baptisms in Florida? Because we're getting a lot of Florida listeners coming on board, and maybe you've just come to Christ, gotten saved. Uh it's time to get baptized. Maybe you have been saved a long time never got water baptized. It's time to get dunked. And uh, now we've got a contact for you. If you're in the Jacksonville area or you want to drive up there, you can make arrangements with the church there, Dr. Pat Holiday. Dr. Pat, if someone wants to email you, what's the best way to do that? Uh, they can go dr.pat.holiday, two L's. 777 at gmail.com Amen. We'll have this up uh, here in a few hours. I want to encourage you all to invite friends out uh, to these programs. Tune in to Miracle Internet Church live every week. Oh, Dr. Pat, I know what I need to ask you. Um, God that? is impressing on me to begin to open up more lines. And one of these programs, you, you decide when you want to do it. I want you to uh, bring the word, and then maybe in the second hour, I want um, you and Dr. Sabrina to take some calls and uh, mm -hmm. some prayer requests. Might we do that one week? You let me know when, and sure. we'll set it up. I'd oh, love yeah, to get some anytime. open line times. Yeah, we always like to do stuff like that. That'd be great. You know, we mm -hmm. haven't done that in so long. We have I many to... deliverance manuals yes. up on Kindle, and for $9.95 a month, they can get free any of those books up there. I have about 150. Wow. Plus, you can get any books of anybody else on Kindle up there free. So, uh, there's a, a library on the Internet, and uh, they need to start reading 
because like in our manuals, we put a lot of scripture in there and back it up with the word. And they'll learn a lot fast. I, I wrote a lot of my books when I was uh, teaching in the seminary for eight years. And we were the only seminary in America that was teaching deliverance. So a lot of them were written years ago, some of them recent, but there's a lot of stuff up there for people to learn. They're not going to rob you. We get very little out of that, and that's why we did it that way, is so that people could afford to buy those books. They're cheap. We get very little out of them. maybe a dime a book or something. Uh, so we did it for the body of Christ, and you don't have to walk around wondering what to do. God has information for you. He's setting up these uh, outlets for the ministers to teach so that you can get deliverance. Um, I, I listened to a little of your couple that was just on there, the Hutchinsons, is that their name? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. They were very, very good. They, they're they very thorough, very loving. Uh, you can feel that they love the people that they minister to, and they're not up there just trying to get your money. They're very interested in getting you set free, and yes. that's the way ministers are supposed to be. Amen. That's what uh, Omega Man has been very giving but I understood his position, but God gave him a word tonight. Amen. And now you can run 20 miles more. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Dr. Pat, Dr. Sabrina, thank you yeah. uh, for coming on. I love you both. I uh, love Miracle Internet Church. You're all doing a great job. And uh, Dr. Pat's been with me since the beginning, folks. Uh, the early days, we're into the eighth season together. and um, That's right. That's Doc, right. we've come a long way for Jesus. We're going to go a lot longer, should he tarry, uh, to the finish That's line. Right. Uh, let me well, pray. We were the only, I think Keltner was doing deliverance on his show somewhat. Uh, but uh, we were the ones that really started going after the getting the deliverance ministry out there. And uh, most of your deliverance ministries said you can't do that. You can't cast out spirits on the on the radio, and now a lot of them are doing it themselves. <laughs> Amen. And you know what? Right. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. If it took us to put a fire into some people, to show them, yes, you can. God will back you up. Doesn't matter where you're at. He's where two or three are uh, present in his name. He's there, even over a phone line. Um, and have childlike faith, and we stepped out. Now, you've been, you've been, you've been a pioneer in this. Been doing it many years, but... Um, I started with childlike faith and said, you know, I believe the Word of God. Why can't we do it over the mm -hmm. phone? And uh, God set it up that night. Uh, you were ministering. We opened up the phone lines, and that man manifested. We could have said, I'm sorry, brother, we can't pray for you. You're on a phone. No, mm -hmm. we prayed for him, and I followed your lead ever <laughs> since. And uh, here we go. Here we are. Thank God. I, I give the Lord Jesus the praise. You know, whatever I can do to contribute, by well, the time I got left um, to win souls, Lord, here I am. Uh, folks with that That's we're right. out of time but we're going to be back next week uh, tune in next week 11 Eastern with Miracle Internet Church uh, Dr. Pat let me pray for you and Dr. Sabrina Father God in the mighty name of Jesus I thank you for these women of God I thank you for the ministry that you've called them to I thank you for Miracle Internet Church and that divine appointment when I got to meet Dr. Pat before the show was ever started Lord when I came back through Jacksonville fresh from Costa Rica got to meet some saints involved in deliverance Thank you, God, for this divine contact. I thank you for the work that they're doing and what you have called them to. I ask that you bless them. Loose finances, God, that they can do everything that you have called them to accomplish. Release healing for their bodies and for mine. Strengthen us all, Lord God. Give them favor. Bring in people to the program like never before from around the world to tune in to the local church. And, Lord, should you, Terry, give us each 120 years. We ask this all tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Dr. Pat, yes. I could see you doing a program at 120. Me doing one at 120. Okay. Oh, it God. doesn't. We're not doing videos, so. You remember so. when you came to Jacksonville and you went back and talked to Keltner, <laughs> and Keltner said, well, how is she? You said, 
Well, I would date her. <laughs> Folks, I did. Uh, let me go on the record. 65, I did say that. Then. Dr. Pat's a good-looking lady. And um, <laughs> you know what? You could be doing a program at 120 because uh, you don't sound a day over 40 right now. Well, I don't feel a day over 40. You're still a young, spry chicken. Uh, Dr. Sabrina, I equal for you? I don't. <laughs> She's laughing. And hey, I've got gray yeah. hair, but as long as my voice holds up, I'll do it at 120. Should the Lord tarry? I might need a cane. Maybe yeah. not. We might be like Brother Lou Pence. Praise you the Lord. You know what we did Sunday? We we prayed, uh, uh, we prayed, played uh, Shambach tape where he was leading singing. And my God, that guy had a voice. He had a trumpet for a voice. He was doing. He was dancing all over the place like the old tent revival. We played some charismatic music of the '80s, and then we put him on. Uh, and that man really had an anointing on him. You know, folks, if you're in that area, get on out to Mir- Mir- at Church, meet Sarah in Jacksonville at the hotel. Um, that's where we go. Um, I go to a hotel service on Saturday night at five o'clock, and then Mama Narita goes to one on Sunday. That's the the end thing now. Meet at a hotel. If you're coming into town, you got a place to stay. Um, well, with that, tune in to Miracle Internet Church this week. Uh, Dr. Pat, Dr. Sabrina, thank you all for coming on. We'll see you all next time. Love you both. God, God bless you. God bless Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. Folks, let me save this. We'll be right back. Got one more show. Got the Hobsons coming to you right now. Omega Man Radio has been commissioned to invade deep into enemy territory, drive out the hosts of hell, and take back the land. Our mission is to preach Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is the only name written under heaven by which men might be saved, cast out demons, and pray for the sick that they may be healed in Jesus' name. If this program is a blessing to you and you would like to take part in this harvest of souls, join with us and attack the hosts of hell by donating any amount online at www.omegamanradio.com. You may also donate by sending check or money order to 9030 West Sahara Avenue, Suite 665, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. We thank you.